Imagine standing atop a quiet hill as the first rays of sunlight burst over the horizon. It's a beautiful scene, one we see every day without thinking. But the light warming your face isn't just today's gift. It began its journey over 100,000 years ago in the heart of a star. This light fought its way out of nuclear fire, bounced through a storm of plasma, and crossed 150 million kilometers of space just to reach you. Today we follow that journey. We're not just looking at the sun, we're diving inside it. We're going to the place where time slows, matter crushes itself into plasma, and physics bends under pressure. What NASA and scientists have uncovered about the sun's core is astonishing. Let's begin. Before the Earth, before even the planets, there was a silent cloud drifting in the Milky Way. This cloud, known as a giant molecular cloud, was immense, spanning hundreds of light years and composed of hydrogen helium and the remains of ancient stars. It floated in peace until something disturbed it, the shockwave of a nearby supernova. This event triggered chaos. The cloud began to collapse in on itself, fragmented into smaller pockets of dense gas. One of those fragments, thanks to the relentless pull of gravity, began to contract and heat. That fragment became our sun. As gravity pulled it tighter, it began to spin. A rotating disk of dust and mate formed around it. This was the solar nebula. In its center, the protostar grew denser and hotter. The rest of the disk flattened and began to form planets, moons, and comets. This wasn't just the birth of a star, it was the creation of a solar system. Astronomers today still observe such stellar nurseries like the Orion Nebula. Each bright speck within it could become a sun each with its own story. As the protostar gained mass, the pressure and temperature at its core skyrocketed. When it reached about 10 million degrees Celsius, something extraordinary happened. Hydrogen atoms began to fuse. Fusion sounds impossible. Two positively charged protons repel each other. The barrier that keeps them apart is known as the Coulomb barrier. But deep inside the sun, another rule takes over quantum tunneling. In essence, it allows particles to defy classical physics. Even if they don't have the energy to climb the barrier, they can tunnel through it. This is how stars ignite. Two protons become deuterium. Deuterium fuses with another proton to become helium-3. Two helium-3 nuclei combine to create helium-4, releasing energy, positrons, neutrinos, and high-energy photons. This cycle, called the proton-proton chain, powers the sun. It's the same principle behind hydrogen bombs, but in the sun, it's perfectly balanced, sustained, and controlled. The sun's core is a realm of extremes. Though it occupies only 25% of the sun's radius, it contains nearly half of its mass. Temperatures hover around 15 million degrees Celsius. Its density is over 150 times that of water denser than lead. Photons created by fusion can't travel in a straight line. The plasma is so dense that they are constantly absorbed and re-emitted in random directions, a process called radiative diffusion. It takes these photons thousands to millions of years to reach the surface. Meanwhile, neutrinos, those ghost-like particles, zip out almost instantly. For decades, we detected too few of them. It wasn't until we discovered neutrino oscillation, how they change form as they travel, that the mystery was solved. Experiments like Super Kamiokande in Japan played a crucial role proving that our models of the sun were right and giving us rare insight into the heart of our star. After the core energy moves into the radiative zone, here photons continue their chaotic bounce, inching their way outward. But beyond that, at about 70% of the sun's radius, the rules change. This is the convective zone, a churning sea of plasma. Here, hot plasma rises, cools, and sinks again in massive looping currents. It's like watching a boiling pot with bubbles the size of continents. This process is called convection and it's much more efficient at transporting energy than the diffusion in the radiative zone. At the very top is the photosphere of the surface we see. Light breaks free here, racing to Earth in just eight minutes. If a photon's journey through the sun, 
We're a hundred year hike, only the final few steps are visible to us. How can we understand something we've never seen? We study the sun using indirect tools. One method is helioseismology, the study of vibrations on the sun's surface. These ripples caused by sound waves tell us about the sun's interior layers, much like how geologists use earthquakes to study Earth. Another tool, neutrinos. By detecting and analyzing them, we confirm what's happening in the core. For example, Canada's SNO Observatory proved that neutrinos change types during their journey solving a decades-long mystery. More recently, NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe and the Solar Orbiter flying closer to the Sun than anything before. They're not entering the core, but they're giving us new data about the Sun's outer layers and magnetic fields. The sun is about halfway through its life. Right now, it fuses hydrogen into helium steadily. But in five billion years, hydrogen will run low. The core will shrink, heating up even more. Helium will begin to fuse and the outer layers will expand. The sun will swell into a red giant, possibly engulfing Mercury, Venus, and even Earth. It will shed its outer layers into space, forming a glowing planetary nebula. What remains will be a white dwarf, an Earth-sized remnant of incredible density, no longer burning, just fading slowly. We owe our lives to the sun's balance between fusion and gravity. And when its time ends, it will return its material to the cosmos, just as stars before it once gave birth to us. The sun isn't just a star, it's a natural nuclear reactor, a light bringer, a life giver. Understanding it helps us understand all stars and protect our planet. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections can damage satellites and power grids. In 1859, the Carrington event caused telegraphs to spark and catch fire. If a similar event happened today, the global internet could go dark. That's why solar science matters. That's why we study the sun's heartbeat. So tomorrow morning when the sunlight hits your face, remember the journey it took, the physics it overcame, the time it traveled, the star it came from. That light is ancient and it was made just for you. Every sunrise tells a cosmic story. The warmth we feel each morning is born from violence, from fusion, from an ancient engine, billions of years old. Our understanding of the sun is still growing, still deepening, and with it, our sense of place in the universe. So keep looking up. The star that gave us life still burns with secrets. And every day, it sends light to remind us the universe is alive in motion and intimately connected to us. Thank you for watching and for walking this journey into the core of the sun.